welcome to this special My Little Pony Equestria Girls. What should I do and should I panic now special? Then I am one of your panelists, Norman Sanzo from the MBS show. Also joining me today by alphabetical order is Alpha Brony from Brony Time. Hey guys, how's it going? And also joining us is Cal Payne from EQD. Hey everyone. And is it P or S that goes first? I'm a bit blurry with my... P? It's P. Alright. And also joining us is Pixel Kitty from DeviantArt. Salamat Peta. Did I get that one right? <laughs> More or less. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> what was that? It's a Malay greeting. Oh, okay. That was awesome, Pixel. And Chef Sandy from Bronyville. Howdy, howdy. So we're all here because we're a bit concerned for Equestria Girls and, well, we have the loudest opinions out of the rest of the people who might give a crap. I don't want to say we have the loudest opinions because <laughs> there's some loud mouths out there. But, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I would like to That's... think the most uh, well-rounded opinions. Can we say that? Yeah, I, I, I would think hope so. Yeah. I, I think that would work. I, I think that works. I think that works. So I think this is a rare occasion where three podcast hosts, one website person, and one artist are in the same room, right? Probably. So. Sure. That sounds like the start of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three podcast hosts walk into a bar and see a deviant art person and a uh, website person. <laughs> You'd think and the deviant started. art person would have seen it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, before we start, I think the main issue we need to address is if we don't like the movie, don't insult the production crew. Yeah, I think that's oh, yeah. Like that. for sure. So I think I'll hand it out to Calpain first because he wrote that beautiful article on EQD. Yeah, um, after we got some reviews, stuff about the, the trailer and stuff like that, people started freaking out and things like that, and there was even, according to, I think it was, wasn't it Bob Carr, Sandy? Yeah, Bob has talked about it quite a bit. We've talked with various people involved in the show, and, you know, some of them had said that they were feeling a bit put out by some of the fans' reactions. Now, admittedly, with your effort, Cal Payne, and some of the the Thank You DHX, which was started by a good friend of mine, Feather Prop. We really got the word out that people were, you know, saying thank you for all their, all their hard work on the show. And you certainly helped quite a bit with that too, Calpan, so thanks. Yeah, no problem. I, I thought at, um, when I heard that sort of thing from Bob, and I also heard about the Thank You um, DHX project over there on Twitter, that it was just the right thing to do. We had started to reach like a, like a critical mass where people were just kind of flailing all over the place, acting insane over this. And it was just something to try and hopefully, you know, ground people that it's going to be okay and we should, you know, um, we should respect the people that created it and stuff like that because it's the same people that brought us ponies after all, you know? I think one of the most funny slash ironic things that come out of that whole Twitter thank you DHX <clears throat> was when the official Hasbro twi Twitter account said, like, we just want to say thank you DHX for doing such a great job. So it's kind of funny because Hasbro uses a hashtag created by bronies to help quell angry bronies for stuff that Hasbro made DHX do. It's like this weird... <laughs> it's like... It's inception for... Yeah. <laughs> true, true. I kind of thought, I was like, yeah, that's funny. But. Yeah, I think from that thank you DHX thing, a lot of beautiful story came out where this one military guy who has post-traumatic... Um, what was it? Post-traumatic stress disorder? Yeah, PSTD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He watched ponies and he's all okay about it. And yeah, I, I think um, things like that are really awesome. And for people to, well, basically bash DHX because they made a movie that nobody really likes. That's that's not fair in my books. Well, especially since the movie isn't even out yet. Yeah. 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 No, but still, people have their reactions. And, well, you are entitled to your reactions, however wrong they are. There's kind of a system of events, a series of events that happens with every drama outbreak now, right? You, you get something happens, and then you have uh, fans overreacting, and then you have other fans saying, hey, don't overreact, and then you get the first fans angry, they're being told not to overreact, <laughs> and then they overreact about that. So, yeah, this followed the formula for the most part, as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. As far as like reactions go, what was everyone's initial reaction to when the first time they saw the uh, trailer? Well, I know we all had like rumblings and saw it coming because we saw the leaks and stuff like that. Mm. But when we actually saw the trailer, like holy crap, there it is, it's real. What was everyone's like sort of first feelings about it? Elfo, why don't you go first? Me? 
Well, I will say that when I first saw it, it was like, holy That's shit. not a word. It's real. The second thing, I was like, oh, good. It doesn't look as bad as all the pre-production stuff looks like. They don't look, they don't have the ears and the wings and the cute, cutie mark tattoos all over their face and arms and everything. Uh, so it did look better. but And so it made me like more hopeful for it. But at the same time, I'm still disappointed by the idea of it. Mm. Not angry about it. Disappointed. There's a difference. So, Kelpian, what about you? Well, personally, yeah, I have to say, I have to agree a little bit with Alpha Brownie here in the fact that um, as soon as I saw the trailer, I was greatly relieved to see that it was not like the pre-production stuff, the concept art and whatnot. So that was a huge boost to me. Um, as for as for how I feel about it now, um, after that, I, I'd say I'm actually just cautiously optimistic. It's made by the same people that brought us ponies and got us into a show about ponies, for goodness sake. So I, even though it was something that was put on them by Hasbro and stuff like that, I kind of trust them to try to make it as fun as it can be. So I'm, I'm going to look forward to it. Okay, Pixel, what about you? Uh, I'm going to jump on the thank goodness it wasn't like the concept art bandwagon. I was very happy they didn't have uh, cutie marks on their cheeks and the weird ears and then the, like the ponytail to the back of their head. I'm glad that stuff wasn't in the... Uh... The shape of their head looked a lot better too. Yes, yeah, they, yes. they looked like... <laughs> it didn't look like they had some kind of horrible birth defect <laughs> with oversized skulls as much. Yeah. <laughs> and after I watched it, it was sort of like, yeah, I, I've been generally indifferent to it. It doesn't make me angry, but it's not necessarily something I'm going to rush out and see. You know, I, I'd certainly be happy, happy waiting till it's out on disc rather than going to the theater and seeing it on the big screen. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think we talked about on the previous show. Norman, that I love Monster High, so in, in some ways it seems like it should be like, yay, this totally appeals to me, but it really doesn't. It, it seems in some ways like a weird knockoff of Monster High, which essentially is what it is, so, yeah. Okay, what about you, Sandy? Well, um, I had seen the production stuff that had been posted as, as quote-unquote rumor by Seth up on Equestria Daily quite a while back. So I was kind of gotten used to seeing that as the main six. So when they had the promotional art appear in the New York Times, I was kind of taken aback and wondering why would they go from the simplistic, obviously with sort of a Doug esque aesthetic, to these oversized head things with cutie marks on their faces. And so it all kind of came a lot clearer when they showed the trailer of the actual animation. And so there is this disconnect between what the toys look like and what they look like on the cartoon. Because apparently, though, you know, as the quote-unquote prototype showed up on Equestria Daily, everyone goes, oh my gosh! And because there is a disconnect between their appearance on the cartoon and their appearance in toy form. Uh, when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, well, thank goodness. So to mirror everyone else, it's like, it's not going to be the weird cutie mark face thing. But it certainly looks, well kind of low grade when you have when you compare it to their competition mm. yeah it's kind of mm -hmm. funny you you have that opening sequence right that takes place in the equestria we all know and, and adore and it looks great it's this beautiful shot of the crystal empire and it's all shiny and the animation looks really good and then it's kind of switches to the equestria girls world and it just doesn't look as nice it's not as endearing i don't know True. Do you think it's just because they're uh, trying to, like, it's a whole new style of art for them? I mean, they are working on Lil's Pet Shop, which has humans, but do you think it's just that whole, they're sort of treading new ground here with uh, well, I'm sure. this stuff? And I think visually they want to differentiate. They want it to be, you know, this is a different world, it looks different, and that's fine. I, I'm not making a judgment on their talent or, or you know, what they're doing or, or how how good the animation is. It's just more like, eh, this style doesn't appeal to me as much. And to be fair, I don't really like Little's Pet Shop either, so. Mm, okay. I have a, another little thing to add about that, is that I, if I remember right, a long time ago when I was doing some research for like why DHX Media was chosen for um, to animate uh, My Little Pony was that um, they'd had experience before with other programs with four-legged animals like um, Martha Speaks and stuff like that. So they Great had show. experience. 
Yeah, so they, they've had experience animating four-legged characters, and so they're really good at it. So maybe some of the disconnect comes from, yeah, indeed, they might not be as talented at animating people. Hmm, okay, that's true, because uh, some of the DHX shows that do show two-legged creatures, uh, like um, Tom Puppies, Pet Shop was one of them. And does DHX do um, Dan Versus? No, uh, I don't think they so. do that. Hmm. Well, the thing but, is, like, I don't think the animation like quality looks any less uh, well done than it does like in, when they're in pony form. I just think it's the setting which kind of like sets it back because everything is it's a high school setting. You know, it's it's taken from a <laughs> fantasy environment which looks so whimsical as it is, and then it's washed down to like a high school setting. You know, it's like when you go to Equestria, you have the the swoopy swirly clouds, and you have buildings that look all cool and stylized. But now you're talking about human world, the human stuff, and it's just much more simplistic. And I think that sort of like is, might be what you see there. Okay. Well, as for me, when I first saw the trailer, I was surprised, shocked at what I saw, and I saw it again. And, well, theories came popping into my head, like, hmm, there's a door. What was the door doing there? And there's a lot of stuff. Um, overall reaction is, I can't wait to watch it because I have theories like who is that one character that looks like Sunset Shimmer? Yes. And is that the character from the toys? It's like in the description of the toys it says Sunset Shimmers knows a way to a magical adventure, something like that, and she's also a student of Princess Celestia. So like who is this character? I want to know, is it the same one as the pony toys or is this just some kind of recolored character or something? I'm looking at the toy right now, and she just does not look evil enough. <laughs> she looks kind of nice. So does yeah, Trixie. I, I think all the pony toys look fairly yeah. benign. <laughs> I mean, she learned Trixie. the magic of friendship. <laughs> I, I'm sure that, you know, Trixie has her double eye shine and looks all happy, and I'm sure that when Chrysalis comes out, she'll be smiling too. <laughs> uh, no, but... Uh, and Nightmare Moon is grinning too. <laughs> oh, boy. No, but She's the, a happy night tyrant. <laughs> but to address your concern about the concept art that's been shown on, well, there's a leak on EQD and the one that showed up on the New York Times, I mentioned this on the previous episode, and the one that popped out on EQD, that's just um, concept art for the show, the movie, and the one that we saw in New York Times is the art for the doll packaging. Yeah. Because if you look at the dolls closely, you can see a Cutie Mark tattoo on their faces. Yeah, on the toys. Yeah, yeah the, so... The, the prototypes. So the I'm still figures. thinking that um, when the dolls come out, they might look like their Cutie Mark tattoos, wings, ears. So, eh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say at this point. The, the pictures are of the toy prototypes, supposedly, and a lot can change. Obviously, a lot has changed with the cartoon itself since <clears throat> we first saw the, the first inklings of it. But, uh... But yeah, we'll have to see. It is, it's very possible that the toys could look like that. That it's not uncommon for toys to look very different from their show counterparts. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. But another thing is, looking at the build, I don't have high hopes. And seriously, are we all here interested in the dolls? We're just interested in the shows, right? Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, what? I do collect some of the brushables, but I'm much more of a fan of the little collectible miniatures. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, everything. <laughs> I mean, I, I do have, you know, one of the giant size rarities and a couple customs. So, I mean, I do have quite a bit of the pony merch. Yeah, but so, uh, are you are you interested in look uh, in getting the pony dolls? Uh, Equestria girls? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. Just another concern that hit me while I was at a meetup yesterday. I, I was at Toys R Us and I was looking at dolls just to have a mental comparison of what might come out for. Equestria girls, because right now only Mattel's in the running for dolls for girls, and Monster High, like Pixel said in my previous show, they're at a high quality build. And this is one um, collection of Monster High dolls is build your own. And when I take a good look at it, it's like almost building a Gundam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have that. It's got the interchangeable parts, and you put the little. <laughs> like water soluble stickers to the face and build the face and everything. Yeah. It's, it's kind of neat. 
Yeah, but that's the, and that's why I'm not so interested in the the Equestria Girls dolls because, like I said, the Monster High, there is a huge amount of, of theming and creativity that goes into every doll that, that fits you know the character and it's got all these great little accessories and, and tidy details that really make them interesting. The Equestria Girls dolls don't have that. They're sort of generic looking. They sort of uh, they sort of remind me of like a dollar store knockoff of a Monster High doll. So <laughs> that's not got me that excited. Another, a little too, a little yeah. too late. Yeah. Another thing is I also saw a Barbie doll and yeah, Barbie doll they don't match up with Monster High. Like Monst- I, I don't know how to say this, but Monster High is pretty good in build. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And they have those and um now there's coming out there's like this Ever After High. Oy. It's like the same thing. It's, it's the same particular genre. I think it's MGA doing it. But this particular type of doll has existed for a very long time. If you guys remember Bratz, yeah, Bratz. that was a thing for a while. Um, and then, obviously, you know, Monster High became the big thing. So, I mean, there's been a lot of also rands. There are a lot of similar ideas, and this is just Hasbro's attempt to get a slice of the pie. They just haven't put forth a really good effort, I don't think, yet. I mean, if those prototypes are just the prototypes, that's great, but... They have pretty good build quality that they're coming up against. You really can't cheap out when there's such an obvious quality difference. Yeah, it's true, because when I saw Barbie and I saw Monster High, if you were talking to a, well, potential collector or potential builder or just potential buyer, I would go for Monster High because I see the potential in that. Yeah, every doll is completely unique. I I mean, I have a skeleton doll in front of me, and I have a dragon doll and a cat girl doll, and they all have completely differently molded body parts it's not not cheap at all it's not all kind of stamped from the same mold and then just you know put a different dress on it they're all really well made and even under the clothes you know you take the skeleton girl's dress off hey. and she is a complete skeleton underneath she has the rib cage and it's, it's really neat so you, you can't cheap out if you're going to compete with that and i don't know how much effort they're really putting into it yeah i just have to see i think uh, I think this is a wait and see from Hasbro because obviously these dolls are not meant for us. They're meant for little girls who might purchase a whole set. So well, we'll just have to wait and see. I know I'm not going to buy one. High, so. eh. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. well, here's the thing that like. Uh, talking about like the dolls and the question girls and everything stuff that we've talked about a couple times and I'm almost like tired of talking about it but it is the whole idea of like uh, the over sexualization and turning like hey now you know I feel like there's this been like huge like push for feminism as far as railing against the question girls and I just don't know how much of the burning community is actually feels that way or are they just saying hey here's a talking point to you know get behind since we don't like question girls to begin with I, don't I love the brony community I do, and I have so many wonderful friends in the Brony community, but I don't see them calling out feminism as an actual argument for the most part. I mean, that, that's not something I, I think the community is too concerned about uh, as a gestalt. I don't know. I mean, um, feminism and all that stuff. I think you're reading it from newspaper kind of deal where, oh, this is the hotness right now. Let's print it out. We'll get more well, readers. There's been, so, there's been several like uh, articles that have been written uh, about Equestria Girls and like, hey, look, they're turning this uh, an asexual character, well, or character's not supposed to be that way, into like, here's a uh, super stylized, sexualized character that now girls have to sort of want to live up to or have this weird sort of self-image of uh, that's been done with Barbie, that's been done with Bratz, Bratz Babies, and now Equestria Girls is just another one in the line of here's a toy that makes girls want to grow up faster than they should. To be fair, then we actually have an article not too long ago saying My Little Pony toys were were part of the problem. You know, they were (laughs) much too curvy these days. And they they were... That was one chick yeah. on Yahoo saying that Celestia looked like a stripper. And I thought that was the yeah. funniest thing I ever read. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. Like, well, I mean, her toy does have a rounded butt, but horses kind of do. Butts it's, are round, so... Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're a robot. I mean, so yeah, the Celestia toy has a rounder butt than a four-inch, than a smaller brushable, but 
so. Their size is I much mean, bigger. The, 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 the fact that they found it sexualized is a lot more about them than it does the toy. Yes. <laughs> true that, true I, that. I take that, you know. and then I take that as an anomaly of here's just someone being completely stupid <laughs> versus like some of the other like more legitimate complaints I've heard, excuse me, heard about it. Well, um, if it's Yahoo or Docker it's, or Daily Dot, it's all uh, clickbait. They get paid per click, and if they write something ridiculous and scandalous, a lot of people will go there to tell them off, but they get impressions and therefore get paid more. So it's kind of a it, – the fact that they're paid for writing crappy things is unfortunate. Uh, I fed into the system. I think, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> but no, I, I think all this is – well – it's just their deal about selling toys and stuff right now. Um, I think we should try and move on to the second thing on the agenda. And what is that? I've tweeted out if somebody has any questions, they can ask us. And only one person did, and that's Rhythm Reveal. And she, I, I don't know, is it she or he? Sorry if I'm wrong, I'm derpy that way. Um, what are your opinions on the struggles? <laughs> yeah, and I, I think we mentioned it in the previous section. We're kind of neutral to it for now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's like I said. I I want to sort of explain. Like when I say like I'm disappointed by it, it's like we all wanted to see uh, a Friendship is Magic movie. We all wanted DHX to be a part of it. You know, we all wanted the crew to do it and do it right. And then we got so many of those like key components to it, and instead we got a Equestria Girls. You know, and it kind of seems like a step back. Yeah, if you want to take from the defendant's standpoint, it seems to step back in that. It takes a step... Because they had so much they could do. I mean, Equestria is such an awesome landscape. They could have done something huge and awesome, uh, like they did with, like, the Camelot Wedding or what they tried to do with, you know, Crystal Empire. They could have done so much more with the world they had and the universe they had. Maybe go back and see the Fall of Luna, you know. But instead, we get this tropey, you know, high school drama setup, which, in general, sucks. But there are a few cases where someone can do better and actually make a good high school story. But for the most part, it's just kind of that, oh, wow, way to backtrack and completely miss, you know, miss out completely. What you could yeah, have. True, but the other thing is this story was built way before the Bruni fandom got really popular. Yeah. It's not even that. It's just, it's the, it, it's the, the idea of it all. I'm not talking about that you have to make a movie for us. You know, I'm just talking about making a good movie in general, you know. That's the nice thing about THX. They take crappy ideas and made really good stuff out of them. I mean, the whole point of the Camelot wedding was we want to make another pink princess, you know, Cadence. And they were able to build something completely awesome off of that. And I hope they were able to do the same thing with Equestria Girls. But hopeful, you know, hopeful optimism, but still just disappointed that it had to go that way. Yeah, understandable, understandable. But... Rant! <laughs> No, that was a good rant. I yes, I like that. Uh, anybody else got something to add in to chip in? I, I think what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's drop the mic, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> no, know, don't. It, it, as we said, you know, it's it's not for us, and this it was done back in 2012. So you know, the Bronies flipping out about it now. Eh, it's well, they flip about it about everything. So I mean, yeah. It, when in yeah. doubt, <laughs> when in doubt, flip out. That seems to be the uh, the modus operandi for our group. It's a way to sell toys because if Equestria Girls is in fact just a one off thing to sell the dolls, then you know it's, <laughs> it's not really much of a sin considering that Pony itself is a toyetic series mm-hmm. and is intended to sell dolls. And really, the whole deal about it being shown in all these rural locales is that they wouldn't see it otherwise. You know, it's in theaters in these really rural locations that don't have the hub, and they want little girls to know why they should buy, you know, creepy, tattoo-faced, <laughs> same face, Twilight, <laughs> as opposed to one of the nicer-looking, you know, cloth-clothed the- uh, Monster Alley dolls. <laughs> Is that really where it's playing, just in, like, rural locations? There's no, like, big city premieres or anything? No. I haven't even paid attention. Like, I, I'm, I give so few... That's not a word! ...about this. I don't even look at where it's playing, so... Well, in Texas, here near DFW, the only two yeah. places they're playing it near are in Wichita Falls, which is 100 Wichita miles... Falls. Wichita Falls! <laughs> howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> um, is 100 miles to my west, and I believe, like, Odessa or something like that. And it's 100 oh, miles to my southeast. So it's 100 miles west or 100 miles southeast. 
it's only in these rural areas. And if you look at, you know, where it's playing in Pennsylvania or playing in, in California, pretty much it's all showing in places aside from one showing in San Diego and there's one showing in Houston that it's, you know, all the places in between that wouldn't have an opportunity to see it on the hub. It's, it's kind marketing. of interesting. They did these huge media blitzkriegs, right, for uh, for the Canterlot wedding and for the princess coronation, at least kind of Hollywood-style premiere things and parties, but they, they're not really doing that for their actual movie that's premiering. They're, they're not making yeah. nearly as big a deal out of it. Um, it's on two weeks, point. isn't it? Um, 10 yeah, days, so. 10 days. The 16th. Um, 15 if you're at the LA Film Festival? Well, I think it's funny because they're only doing rural areas. If that's the case, you should be showing it in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of BFE here in eastern Pennsylvania, so. Yeah, I, I do I know. can hear the banjos from my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. I wish I, I wish I get the inside reference because I live in Malaysia and we don't get all the stuff. We don't even have a, a showing here, even if it's rural. Let me just tell you, Norman, if you're ever an American, you hear banjos run. That's about all I can say. So. Especially if you're on a rafting trip. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have a pretty mouth. Um, oh, no. no. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like they really don't see, they're really underplaying it, you know. Yeah, true. But uh, do you think, here's the question. <laughs> Two questions. And, uh, do you think they would actually make an actual Friendship is Magic movie? And on the flip side of that, do you think they would base it on the success or failure of Equestria Girls? Meaning that if Equestria Girls does poorly, they wouldn't even entertain thought because they're like, hell, oh, look how much that sucks. Mm, I, I think if they do a second movie, it's going to be later or maybe never. If you look at the Transformers movie, the 1982 83 version, they only did it once. So Hasbro has a tendency to do cartoon movies once. Mm-hmm. So if even if they do do another movie, it might be, what, that generation six maybe? Well, well that, that movie was meant to sell toys. Yeah. Kill off all the characters. So, so if this one, too. This movie is. <laughs> well, not quite. It's establishing a new universe so that, you know, that they show... But, I mean, ponies are still incredibly big. You know, the current iteration of ponies is still an incredibly big thing. And, you know, we're getting a full season four, and as far as anyone knows, we'll make it a season five. You know, I'd personally like to get six seasons in a movie, but we'll see what we get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. And- well, the, well, the other generations of ponies, from my, from my understanding, have had at least, at least a, you know, a movie or two. So I'm thinking that we'll probably get our movies somewhere down the line, especially if it remains popular. Even if um, Equestria Girls tends to fall on its face in theaters and maybe even DVD sales, it's still a separate IP. So if Hasbro is thinking the smart thing, they might not take the success of that particular endeavor and, you know, apply it to ponies thinking, oh, since this sucked, um, a ponies thing is going to suck. So I think it should be okay. We should get a movie. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side of that, the reason they made Equestria Girls is because of the success of Friendship is Magic. And they're like, let's use this as a springboard to launch this new toy line to go against Monster High instead of mm-hmm. spending money and R&D and stuff to create a new IP. So um, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that's playing devil's advocate just for the sake of doing it. So, mm-hmm. And they may not even be necessarily expecting a huge box office return on this. I mean, keep in mind, it's... It's a commercial. They're putting this out there to sell the toys. Now, if the toys sell really well and the movie doesn't do so well, they'll still probably consider the movie a success because it did what it's supposed to. It drove kids to the stores, to the pink aisle, to buy those dolls. Mm-hmm. That's true, that's true. Yeah, because originally, this, um, from what I have heard, this movie was not actually meant to go to theaters. It was meant to be for TV. And at the last minute, Hasbro decided to put it up for um, actual theater release. Yeah, that, so. that kind of threw me off because I've been following the whole um, thing on the whole report on it because we talked news on our show. So I followed up on it like, oh, it's going straight to DVD. It's a straight direct to DVD movie. Yay. Oh, wait. Then it turned out to be a series, its own spin off episodes. Like, what? Yeah, hey, I was sort of talking about some of the other like community concerns that they saw is that uh, the ruining of the characters. Uh, <laughs> Oh, this is a fun, fun. Ruined forever. Uh, you know, 
it, this this happens in every every fandom. It is by far not unique to bronies or you know anything like that. But it's the weird sense of ownership that people get over the characters, and this happens in every fandom. It's it's certainly not exclusive to us. Or any medium. True that. Yeah. Like fans. Well, I mean, like fans or popular fiction or anything like that. So I mean, people have a weird sense. They they feel that because they're such big fans, they have some sort of input or ownership over the characters' development. And you, you have to understand that you don't. I mean, it's it, it's just. No, it, ponies is Hasbro's. They get to, to futz around with it as they will, and screaming about how quote unquote you know someone's ruining the fandom forever because you know Twilight talks to 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 Brad. You know, oh man, she hugged Brad. Therefore, therefore shipping is real, and Twilight's going to have a kid in the next season because <laughs> hugging implies pregnancy. Because that's we, where centaurs come from. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, I won't like how they did put like all. It was cool. That was a cool thing about the uh, previews. I, I did like freeze frame to see if I could catch any like known characters in the background, and they had Scooby doing the chicken dance, and that was cute. But uh, uh, but some of the things that sort of like bugged me with it is like you know everyone looks like super stylish. You know, even like Applejack, who really isn't about fashion, but she's got a cute, smart dress and boots and everything. It's kind of like I think that's what I think of like ruining the character, or is it just takes the character and just tweaks into a point like, well, that's not really that character from what we've seen. Or not. Uh, here's an interesting theory I have. Twilight goes into a door to a different dimension. So technically, the friends over there, they're a different version of the main six or the main five. Because, okay, you might have this Fluttershy who is shy, but she may not be the same Fluttershy we know. It's totally a different Fluttershy. Maybe she has an anger issue. Maybe she doesn't have an anger issue. And with Applejack, maybe Applejack doesn't live on a farm. Maybe she just uh, kind of your everyday girl from the South who just goes shopping or do stuff. Maybe she's a hardworking at home. Ooh, how about so, this? Talking about like totally pissing everyone off about ruining the characters. I noticed like in the preview, if you look back, they never actually meant to say any of the other main six's names. Not that I heard. I mean, she calls... Pinkie Pie, Pinkie Pie, we never hear anyone else say that. Could so be. what if their names aren't really like Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Rainbow Dash? What if they have like human names like Susan and Brenda and stuff like that? Would that it's, totally flip everyone's... Yep, that will. That will. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would creep out a lot of people. Rarity's name is Rebecca. <laughs> and, you know, Pinkie's is Paula. Dash is... Or would that have the opposite effect? Because now fans can create this distance. It's like, well, it's not... That's not the character I love. That's Rebecca, or, or whatever the hell. Well, um, in a fantasy world, that would be awesome, but we're living in this world where people scream at every little detail, so, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's another detail, and like, even like Sunset Shimmer, they never say her name, but even she sort of mocks the name Twilight Sparkle, which is like, you know, yeah. like, what the hell's with that name? What kind of name is Twilight Sparkle? It's like, right, because that's a pony name, not a human name. Yeah, but I don't know. We, we'll just have to wait and see because with the naming and everything, I, I'm still going to say that they're still going to keep the name just for selling the toys. Most likely. I'm just, yeah. I'm just wrestling Jimmy's for the hell of it at this point. <laughs> but that was a good, <laughs> that was a good theory. That's a good theory. <laughs> no, but Jimmy's other... will wrestle themselves. They are self-wrestling <laughs> Jimmy's in this fandom. Um, no, but in all honesty, like people have been complaining about Spike. And here's here, here's the thing. Um, not many people notice about Spike, but he went into the portal with Twilight. He did. And it's that last frame. If you notice, that's this last frame where Twilight was spinning around. You notice Spike there. I didn't watch it that obsessively. <laughs> no, it's I, I, I noticed it on the first round. But yeah, after multiple watch, I no, it's 100% confirmed. But no, um, another thing is people have been complaining like, oh, Spike's a dog. Why did they do that? That's insulting. Think about it. In the episode where Spike was babysitting all the pets, he couldn't get on the train. He needed he needed a chauffeur. He got the CMCs. What logic does that do? I just and, think it'd be cuter if he was like a, a little boy, you know. Yeah. But I, if he, he's got a hump or he's like at some point, because it's hilarious. <laughs> 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 I doubt that Hasbro would approve of that. <laughs> Spike can't catch a break. He, he really can't. Yeah. yeah. Throw oh, the duck out. Yeah. There was that, you know, really inaccurate clickbait Daily Dot article, which was like, oh, you know, 
Spike is infatuated with Twilight, and that's really creepy. And I'm like, where did it say that? What, what fanfic have you really? been reading? I didn't see this. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it was all over the place. It was really dumb. And again, Daily Dot is a clickbait website in the lines of Gawker. <laughs> do not click Gawker. Do not click Daily Dot. Try to avoid Yahoo. Mm. You know, the, these people write sensationalist garbage to get your dander up, and it's not worth it. True that, true that. Now, another thing here is, um, is the fandom over, just overreacting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, C. Um, is there oxygen hi. in our atmosphere at the moment? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just that one of the things I've been thinking about. Like, um, funny enough, yesterday I went to a meetup and I talked to some of my local bronies here. And I asked them, what's their opinion about Equestria Girls? And they say that, mm, meh, I'll just wait and see. Surprisingly, all five of them. Oh, except one, he said he doesn't like the skin color for the characters because... Why Why are their colors following the pony colors? That's not compute kind of deal. Because obviously been taking the Doug's world, obviously. Yeah, he, he's, a bit, yeah. he's a bit young, so he has not watched Doug. Aww. He doesn't yeah. want to be in charge of the who's black and who's white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that was the thing, is, you know, supposedly early on, they were human-colored. You know, Twilight was kind of dark-skinned. And they were like, people will that's not a word themselves if this goes through let's make them purple <laughs> yeah because, because it, it it absolves them of having to ascribe a particular race to any given character you know because exactly. we've all seen the various iterations but you know everyone has their own opinions but this way there is no canon representation of the character as a human True. which is a really yeah, they avoid so many potential Lawsuit. drama explosions by just saying, yeah, she's pink, and she's white, and she's blue, and that guy's Doug, and why is there an orange girl, and this guy's green and has frizzy hair and he's a jerk in a leather jacket. <laughs> I would love to see like one of the Doug characters just do a walk by the background of the shot. That would be amazing. I would go drive wherever it is and see it so I could see, like, Doug walk by in the background. And just go, wow, there he is! I agree. I would go, I would fly to the States just to see that. No, but, um, I think, yeah, honestly, we're just overreacting. I agree. I think so as well. The big thing is that people are overreacting over this, and yet it doesn't really affect the main show, you know? I mean, we still have our ponies that are coming back this fall and everything like that. It's a completely separate thing, so if you don't like Equestria Girls, then that's fine. We have ponies, so who cares? True, true, true. Well, true. And, and it's one of those things that poor, poor Megan McCarthy has been having to oh. tweet without ceasing. But no, season four doesn't have anything to do with Equestria Girls. Stop mm -hmm. asking me. And she was like, I feel that I'm going to have to be retweeting this constantly until the end of season four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, she yeah. should just say that and just make those people lose their mind even more. <laughs> She's like, just wait till we see what happens when Sunjet, Shimmer, and Trixie hook up and for some chaos. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. No, but um, I've been thinking about this theory. What if Equestria Girls is just the movie to clip Twilight's wing? Wouldn't that be awesome? That's what I was thinking, because it's like, she has wings finally, and the first time we see her back with wings, she loses her wings instantly. It's like, meh, meh. <laughs> I mean, that would be awesome, right? Uh, the movie did something right, right? Yeah, how would the fandom react to that? It, the, their heads would explode. They, they wouldn't know what to do. It's like, we hate the movie, but they did something right. Oh. No, what would happen if she did lose her wings and became a regular unicorn again? Then everyone would be pissed off. Well, why'd you make her princess and take away her princessness? <laughs> You're probably right. And it's like, oh, shut yeah. up. It's no. like, <laughs> you you it's can like, never be happy. That's the internet. You can never be happy. It's, uh, it's, it's weird because it's like, you know, we, we're all here talking. The people I've had on my show talking about this too. I've always been pretty level-headed saying, it's just a show, it'll be okay, you know. And I just want to know, who are the people who are losing their... That's not a word! For this. Probably just a very, very vocal minority. And then they stir the pot and get everyone going crazy. True yeah. that, true that. I mean, I have level-headed people on my show too. 
I really want some insane person to come on and talk about Ah, oh, they're ruining the fandom! Ah! But no, no. Just go to a convention and just stand there for a few minutes. You'll find one. <laughs> uh, like there was the one guy at, uh, I was at BAP, and uh, this one guy came up to Jason Thiessen and was like, I can't believe you made uh, Twilight and Alicorn and anything that was such a and just like started unloading at Jason Thiessen. And like, Deeper oh, was like, okay, yeah. we gotta go, we gotta go. Sorry, Jason, sorry. Okay, thanks for. It's like, wow, dude. It's like, really? Is that... A place and a time, yeah. a place and a time. And this goes to our first thing. If you don't like it, don't insult the people who are making it. Yeah, there's so much misdirected rage. I mean, th- this whole thing came out, and people had such a visceral reaction, a lot of them very negative to it. And instead of dealing with it rationally and like saying, well, Hasbro, why are you doing this? It all turned into this rage against poor Megan McCarthy and DHX and and don't you dare tell me to stop sending angry messages to her on Twitter because now you're just condescending to me and not respecting my feelings. It was so crazy. And <laughs> I know that's a fandom thing. I, I know I'm sort of like, this has been said ad nauseum in every fandom over the years, but I think man. it's more of a 15-year-old thing. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that's it. Uh, I think all those Halo oh, players, Call of Duty players. <gasps> I, I hate but, to sound ageist. But, you know, all of us here are old enough to know better. True that. Yes. But we have to understand that this fandom trends pretty young. Yeah. You know, True. we're all pretty big outliers. I mean... <laughs> Best so, joke I ever saw. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I mean, we all kind of remember how we reacted to stuff when we were teens. And a lot of the people oh, flipping yeah. out the worst are young teenagers. I was and completely is, rational and level-headed as a child. No, you weren't. <laughs> Me too. No, um, no, I, I was dumb there. <laughs> and and so you know, as this is a lot of people's first fandoms, and they don't they haven't been there and done that yet. So mm. a lot of the really extreme fringy stuff is kids that like this is their first major fandom, and they're in neck deep, and oh my gosh, something changed, and you know, insert flailing here. Yeah, that is true. I mean, um, like you said, this is the first fandom for everyone and yeah i have to say that before this some people are what in the star trek fandom dnd fandom even sonic fandom and well look at how those have been you have those extreme fanatics and you have those level-headed people and those extreme fanatics they know cool they spoil the fandom i just think it's uh i was about to say about sandy there's a funny joke i saw that was like uh, I'm 30, but I feel like I'm 20. Until I hang out with actual 20-year-olds, then I'm like, nah, I'm really 30. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm right there with you, man. I'll be 30 here in 19 days. <laughs> hey, I'm 29, too. Let's go with Yeah. Not over the hill yet. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I just think it's, um, crazy. People yeah. just need, like, uh, yeah, it's like you said, ageism and, like, I think one of the things, too, that the reason they go after, like, it's because Hasbro is such a faceless organization, and there's so many cogs oh, yeah. in that in that clockwork that some of them like it, some of them don't. Right. And so you get these really weird, un- in, like, like double hand, like, sometimes Hasbro likes us, sometimes they hate us, sometimes they acknowledge us, sometimes they don't know we exist. And it's because it's just different people, like, behind that veil of Hasbro. But with, like, Megan McCarthy and the rest of the DHX crew, they're so out there and interacting and back and forth. And we know they're, like, great at making content, putting stuff in there. And I think if you're naive or whatever you want to say and you see what they've been able to do with the show and the stuff they put in, like Derby and all the inside jokes and pop culture and things like that, you think they have such great control and, and ideas about how the show works. And when they do something like this, you don't see as they're following orders from Hasbro, but they are creating content, and it's their idea, just like all this little stuff that I love about the show was their idea, too. And I think that's the uh, ideological disconnect that some people are having. So when they attack Megan, like, hey, you were responsible for all this awesome stuff. You must also, therefore, be responsible for this bad stuff. And that's not the case. Another thing is also that you have to remember, whatever DHX does, they need to get approval from Hasbro. In that uh, last roundup episode where Derpy speaks with that voice, Hasbro approve it first. So maybe thank Hasbro because they approve it first and then you take that back because they pull it back. 
Oh, it's a double-edged sword with with the show staff and the voice talent and everything. They're really open with us. They're really kind in terms of interacting with us on social media and at these conventions and things. And the unfortunate part of that is we feel this connection and this closeness to them that when something like this happens, people feel like they can just reach out and yell at them and, and get their point across. And they have a direct line to the people behind whatever's making them mad at the time. Yeah, that's exactly it. Is They have been so close to us and so open to stuff like that, it almost seems unprecedented. And yeah, it's a two-way street, is that while we can share good things with one another really, really well, we can also share some pretty nasty stuff with one another as well. So, as you said, a double-edged sword. One thing I have to say about the fandom here is, I think this is the first fandom that the show creator and fans can interact with one another openly. Because I'm trying to think of another fandom that does that, and I can't think of one right now. Well, John Sweden well, was pretty open with his fans. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, you know, the current Transformers. There's also, I mean, Trek to an extent. Yeah, Trek certainly, you know, the, it was kept alive by the closeness of the actors making convention circuits and things mm. for all those years when it was off the air and you know, dealing with fans on a more personal level before they got their reboot movie. <laughs> oh, the complaints over that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. Yeah. We're not it's that kind awesome of show. It yeah. led to Wrath of Khan, so. Yeah. Wait, are we ta- oh, I thought we were talking about the new, new Star Trek. Yeah. No, no, the new one is good. I'm talking the motion picture. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, no, but o- overall, true. I think the other fandom, it just popped into my head, the other fandom is the Power Ranger yeah. fandom because, if I'm not mistaken, most of the show crew do interact with their fans not openly like how we have it with ponies but they do maybe emails twitter i, I don't know i i'm not 100 sure how they do it isn't the red ranger doing porn now i heard that mm, no no that was, it was a lookalike but that was actually somebody else oh, okay yeah. um but the I'm power not, ranger not, guys are still really hitting the circuit yeah like uh, they got a few at a couple of the houston cons this year yeah, like Jason David Frank, he's been hitting the fandom really hard with his promos and stuff. Well, he, that was the Green Ranger, right? Yeah, green and the, White Ranger. The green, white, yeah. black, and red. Yeah, he's been in a lot of things. Then he was like an MMA fighter and whatnot. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He's pretty awesome, really. Even even David Yost has done some, and that was the Billy, the original Blue Ranger. Oh yeah. In America, well, Johnny on Lodge has done anime. Yeah, he's the voice for Nero for Devil May Cry 4. Oh, the hit on that one. <laughs> no, but, oh. He was also Vash Stampede. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's all coming full circle now. <laughs> we oh. need them in ponies. Oh, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, first, we need Weird Al, and then we need Jason, and then Johnny on Bosch. We need all of them all. No, but um, coming back to ponies, would you say that they're just selling out? It's their job. It's, yeah, they've been sold out since day one, honestly. It's, that's what it is that there the for. Point. <laughs> honestly, yeah. I mean, the whole point of MLP when, back when it was created, along with all the other toy cartoons and whatnot, was to sell out and make toys. So, yeah, they've been sold out since day one. <laughs> so, yeah, this yeah. time we were lucky enough that they put Lauren Faust. They, they got somebody who had a vision and, and some really new ideas about it on the job. At the end of the yeah. day, that job is to sell toys. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It, it, we just happened to get a good product to help sell those toys as well. If it wasn't for Lauren, it would have been uh, Lauren and the great team, of course, that we have over there at DHX. Oh, we, would have, we would have ended up with just another generation of Hawking Pony toys. Oh, the only last one season. The, um, yeah, the uh, anomaly or the exceptionalism isn't the uh, them selling is selling out? It's being so creative and wonderful. That's the anomaly and exceptionalism of it. You know, mm-hmm. the whole point was to sell out. You know, Sandy, you you were trying to say something? Oh, I was going to say, you know, as I said earlier, as a toyetic series, they they went a bit above and beyond. Yeah, you know, that's true. When it comes to ponies, yeah, mm-hmm. I think the face that we're all looking here for is they sold out with style. They sold yeah. out with substance. Yeah, true. <laughs> I'm not good at the puns. <laughs> no, but still, um, it, it's a wonderful product, seriously. The show and the toys, well, the toys is a bit blurry because for some of us, we might buy them 
And for or not? The, yeah, true that. And even even I think if Pixel's the only one who's going to buy us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even if you do buy stuff, it's going to be from third parties like Hot Topic, Wheel of Fine, and who who else is selling? Um, Enterplay, yeah. We might be buying those instead. And still, oh, don't I, forget the comics. Oh yeah, the IDW. The comics, yes. And I think still uh, Hasbro gets a cut out of that. So we all win, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they do license that's they do license the um, MLP out so people can create these products. So yeah, they're making money. Off us. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Well, I mean, it's, it's actually, uh, if you keep up on the financial side of things, I mean, their licensing <laughs> has just massively exploded in the last few years because the third party marketing for ponies has just been that big of a deal. They yeah, remember excellent. when pony merchandise was kind of hard to find. I mean, there was this long time where you'd go to you know, a store and you'd see, oh, look at all this uh, strawberry shortcake. Lunch boxes and and bags and toys and you won't see much pony now. Now, holy crap! Try to not see pony if you go in just about any store. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. I mean, yeah, I was at a hot topic um, not too long ago, and uh, the lunch boxes and the shirts and the comics and the vinyl toys and, and gosh, and, and that's not to mention like the trip to Toys R Us, which has all the regular toys and all sorts of stuff there as well, and it's it's, it's very popular. I see quite commonly when I go into the stores and stuff like that, I see that those sections are sold out, of, you know, of various things, and it's really a moneymaker. True. Yeah, true. I uh, I went by Target earlier tonight, and the pony section was pretty much uh, empty. Was pretty empty. Um, there had all, someone had gone through the uh, you know the little bitty, I guess five inch plush, the Funrise plush. <laughs> Yes. And had someone, some Cretan, had left Cheeto stains. Oh, oh seriously? Oh, really? Yeah, so that was like, that one's totally not getting bought. I mean, I wasn't buying it. <laughs> I just walked by to see if the, if the merch was out. Jeez. Jeez. Cheeto stains. <laughs> more of a stereotype, you piece of crap. Wow. Oh, oh no. no but honestly- I call shenanigans. I think that's a plant. <laughs> it's got to be a plant. Hey, I, I don't. I don't know. I was just like, really, <laughs> really. <laughs> no, but honestly speaking about all these pony toys, um, over here in Malaysia, we only have well, Toys R Us and any shopping center that takes in Hasbro products, and we 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 get the official stuff. And to get those uh, the third party stuff is kind of hard. And um, yesterday, my co-host Charlie, well, we were planning to get something from Toy Wiz. And we did this analyst where we see how much shipping costs. And the thing that we noticed that he bought around four orders of pony blind bag boxes. And wow, we we are crazy for our pony toys here. Like we order blind bags from out of the country and basically sell them cheap. And we need more stuff here because... <laughs> You guys are you guys are lucky. For us, we need to buy our own stuff. Yeah, it's, I bet you that shipping is quite expensive. Yay! Like Sandy uh, says, shipping is good, but nobody wants to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking when we say shipping? I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no. Want to get to the last yeah. topic here? Yeah, sure. The, yeah. Last, the last bullet point. Yep, yep. Let's. Um, Alpha, why don't you do it? That's it. I'm leaving the fandom. <laughs> yeah. It's like, good. Thank you. <laughs> There's the door. Here's your gift bag. Take care. Once again, I think that links all the way back to the overreacting stuff like that. Um, the really this Equestria Girls thing isn't going to change anything. It's just overreacting to something that overall is not going to change the main series at all. Really, I mean, I guess the, I guess some people are freaking out as um, as poor Megan keeps pointing out that. People are freaking out, thinking that since this exists, it's got to show up in the main show. But it's not going to. It's not going to change anything in the main show, right. and the fandom's still going to be the same. Still making pony stuff and things like that. Just because Equestria Girls comes out doesn't mean there's going to be like a shift away from pony fandom creations or anything like that. We're still going to be pretty much the same, the way we've been since back in 2010. Yeah, true. I mean. Uh, like my uh, the co-host Dan said, um, the people who leave the fandom, they're just rage quitting. So to him, 
that's not really leaving the fandom. It's just, I'm frustrated right now. I don't want to look at you. I'm taking a break kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bronies <laughs> are easily started, but uh, like sand people, they'll soon be back in a greater number. So. <laughs> yes. That is awesome. I will uh, give up my time to respond and give that over to Saberspark, because his video of leaving the fandom, I think, perfectly encapsulates everything that's crappy about it. Uh, Everyone's seen that video, right? Yep. I, I've seen it, yeah. Hey, yes, that, that, it's, it's, it's brilliant. Well, yeah. Essentially, if that's the case, we should also look at his response at um, Equestria Girls. <laughs> 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 that typing there? Gibberish. <laughs> I, I mean, I think a lot of this, a, a lot of the rage, a lot of the overreaction, a lot of the drama, it all kinds of, kind of comes from the same place, which is fear. People love this show and they're afraid it's going to change and they're they're afraid this thing they're into is going to change and push them away and it won't be this thing they love and this perfect fandom or not perfect fandom but this perfect show that they've got so much invested in and you know once they realize that this is kind of a one-off and it's not going to affect the actual show They'll calm down. But right now it's that unknown. It's that terror that it's changing and that what is Hasbro going to do? And yeah, it just needs time and it needs the reassurance of just time to pass and nothing to actually explode or change or Megatron to show up and <laughs> kill all the characters. Yeah. Yeah, that would be kick ass <laughs> That would be a great opening. <laughs> okay, here's a, here's a um, hypothetical question. If somehow the movie makes Twilight enter back to the Equestria we all know as a human, what, what would your response be? Uh, <laughs> I, I think that most of her friends would be very confused. Yeah, because I've seen a screenshot of it. I, I, have to just, I just have to bring it up because I've just seen a screenshot of it and that got me worried for a bit. And I'm not 100% sure how legit that screenshot is. Uh, well, you know, it's that that was actually a very, very clever fake, actually. It took me a little bit of, uh... Yeah, what is the screen... What's the screenshot? It, it was a... Yeah. It was a... Supposedly from a magazine. They even included scan lines. They, they worked really hard to do it. It just that the image was very, very slightly off, just enough to say that it wasn't professionally printed. Uh, but it was two vectors and a picture of human Twilight... And it was like Dash and Pinky freaking out as Human Twilight was like extending a hand. Yeah. And it was it was one of those oh, <laughs> that's really clever fake. But their pixel difference is off, and this is not square. What's they, terrorize the unstable fans? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. Going for it. It, it, it was uh, when you when you said we're all the terror and all that comes about. I was going to say what Tumblr. <laughs> Because um, yeah, that's Rebrought where I saw this. Because that was actually where I saw the the screenshot in question that he was referring to that someone was flipping out, and I was like, no, no. Uh, you still have the picture because I want to see this thing. Um, I need yeah, to I look. Need to I, I need to look for Let it me, then. Um, I have to go back on my Twitter for a bit. What are the, so uh, do continue, and I'll try to find it for you. One of the unfortunate problems is that they are is that. Yeah, the fandom's relatively easy to stir up, and they believe things sometimes a little too easily. Like, I've seen, like, even though it was some recent funny edits that that um, I Am Not Subject number or whatever's been doing, you know, with the Twilight eating things yeah. that's been going on, um, some people have been convinced that since the edits are so good that they're from season four. Oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely nuts. And yeah. um, about the whole fear thing that Pixel was... um touching on i i have to agree and especially considering the thing that we touched on earlier that um for a lot of people this is their very first fandom they're getting involved in so they have a really strong attachment to it because you know it's that first fandom and they really love it and usually the first thing you fall in love with is pretty dang strong i can't really say anything i've been doing my best to terrorize the fandom with screen edits too so yeah. I, I was going to say I, I was going to sorry I was going to say that um, if we're going to talk about screen uh, about um, we, uh, just making the fandom go crazy I seen this one picture of um, Fluttershy eating out of a monkey's brain eating a monkey's I did brain that one. yeah <laughs> and and Twilight sorry, summoning Cthulhu movie. Oh, chill the monkey brains. 
<laughs> I mean, and the snake filled with five eels. <laughs> I was proud of the Cthulhu one. I went to a lot of trouble to make that window glass match match the uh, the original. Yeah, I I did that way sense. too much time on that stupid thing. Yeah, but right now I gotta see this. Essentially, it's on her blog. But essentially, I think the real thing we could say here is: don't believe everything you see online. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's I a new mean. thing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> The willingness to believe some of this crazy stuff, it, again, it all plays into everyone's assuming the other shoe is going to drop, right? That, that the worst case scenario is going to happen because, again, it's their first fandom and they're really deeply invested in it. And they're kind of just constantly living in this state of terror that it's all going to go away or it's going to change or it's going to be corrupted somehow. Oh, and man. in a way, and in a way too, is that um, uncertainty itself is almost worse than accepting something that's bad or something. Just oh, waiting yeah. for that, yeah, just waiting supposedly for that shoe to drop is is freaky. So even if they see like a screenshot that is edited, you know, an edited screenshot that contains something that they don't like, at least they think it's legit and it fills in a gap of uncertainty for them, so they can start either coping with it or ex- or you know being excited about it, you know. They, uncertainty really, really sucks. <laughs> that is true. But I think what is important here is that we calm down and just say to ourselves, this is just a show and, oh my God, McDonald is having ponies now. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We, we've been waiting long for those pony toys. I might need to go out soon and buy ponies. <laughs> they are good quality, the McDonald's ones. They're surprisingly good quality. I remember back in the day when they were the best quality toys you could get. Oh, yeah. Until a fun code did theirs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, just to say is getting her own blind bag finally, can I just say? Because, man, I was thin. Yeah, I know, she, right? She's had her, her short mane design. You know, she's like, hey, I was trying something new. It, it, this is Fluttershy without her mane extensions. That's it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> My late pixels, I just want to say I love the Bioshock uh, ponies. That's nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Did anybody find the uh, Questra Girls thing? I, I have yet to, to find it. I am I'm looking. I am sorry. My Google Foo is not the best. Well, it's what happens when Derpy Brewer decides to take a crap. Yeah, it's it's very slow, but it it happens. Yeah, I'm trying to it look does. for it on my site here too, and it's not working. While we wait for that, let's, I guess, talk about a positive note. What are you all looking forward to in, like, Season 4? What do you want to happen? More Luna. Yeah, more Luna. And uh, <laughs> maybe the CMC will get their cutie marks. We'll see about that. I don't want that, because if the CMCs get their cutie mark, it means it's going to be the end. Yeah, you got to yeah. say that for the finale. What would be hilarious is, like, the very final episode of um, Friendship is Magic. Like, at the very final scene, like, wait, I'm starting to get my cute part, and it starts to, like, fade in, and then the scene cuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> oh, that, that, that is just a no no. Uh, that would be hilarious. It'd be like I the just... end of Sopranos and people just like flip out. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what we need. <laughs> uh, we need one last massive controversy before everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, That's mean. Uh, no. I want to, uh, I want more world building, you know. Oh, yeah, world building. Yeah. Yeah. I would really, really love it if they finally got gave a, um, an episode to like the princesses, Celestia and Luna, just flesh them out a little bit or something. Do you I mean, think now they... that Twilight's a princess, that they're gonna, there's going to be more Canelot action, I imagine. Who knows? Didn't they say that they're going to expand on the world a bit and the history? I hope so. I would hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I hopefully see... with an actual full-length season, we, we can do some more things like that and tell... You know, a, a little bit more of an ongoing story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the short season really felt short, even down to the individual episodes. Yeah. Yeah, they were really pressed for time with the, with um, the past season. But now it seems like they have a lot more time to work on things. And they seem, at least just while looking at their Twitters and just talking with them, they seem to be much calmer and more relaxed this season. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to what they come up with. I don't know, I mean, from what I heard, there's a lot of backstories here and there, and we might see some 
Pegasi family. Oh yeah, there was mention about maybe more pony family stuff, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. So I don't know. I mean, that'll be awesome. And I can't find a picture. I, maybe if I find it, I'll link it in or tweet it out. Any one of us who finds it, we'll just do that. But anyway, <laughs> I, I think that's about it because. Do we beat this dead horse until it turns into a human? Not until. <laughs> <laughs> Bad alpha, bad alpha. Well, anyway, I, I think um, we should end this because some people are getting a bit tired and it's 12 p.m. Uh, sorry, 12 a.m. for most of you guys. Yeah. And, well, it's p.m. for me, so it's no fair. So anyway, um, I think we should end this. So uh, any last words or any thank yous to give up to DHX? Uh, thanks for being awesome, y'all. Yep. <laughs> Love, guys, you are awesome. Yeah, keep being awesome, DHX. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, as, as for me here, I have to say a big thank you because without you guys, I won't be a podcast host. I won't be talking to these awesome people that I'm talking right now. And just thank you for giving us a chance to talk to these people, like talk to you guys, talk to the people I'm talking to right now. I mean, just thank you. Without you, I don't think I'll be having much fun in this fandom. Yeah, thanks for kicking ass. Yeah. Oh, I did think of, I did think of another like funny thing that could like really mess people up. <laughs> so like in Equestria Girls, <laughs> I'll give you this one thing. Like Equestria Girls, like the whole thing, it looks like she's trying to become like a, like a prom queen or something like that, or like a princess. So it's Twilight having to become a princess in the land of the humans as well. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of a crown, they give her wings. Yes. No, no. I I think the best option is to put her in office. <laughs> but yes, uh, DHX. She will be the student president forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> did, did anyone watch um, Weird Science, the TV series? No. This is one thing that the kid wished. He said, I want to be president. What, what he meant was, I want to be president of the chess club. But somehow he got his wish to become president of the United States. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Do that. As far as DHX, uh, thank you for being awesome. Thank you for being a friend, and thank you for making awesome stuff. Uh, thank you for being a shining light in how to do animation well, like Pixar does. You know, it's like it's about making a good show, not just making a show. It's not about the mortgage; it's about the art. True, 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 true. So good I. Job. Yay. So I think we should end Drop this. Mic, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be a little loud. <laughs> hold on, hold on. There was. <laughs> He's gonna do it, isn't he? My ears. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's an old brick building on Alexander in the seedy part of town. When the sun goes down and the bars let out, you wouldn't want to hang around. So lock your car and grab your keys and follow me upstairs. What do you think that it'll be like when you're there? What is this place full of so many wonders? Casting the spell that I am now under where deadlines loom and ideas bloom before they're tossed asunder. And the coffee's not that great, but be prepared to stay up late. Cause the work on this two-parter, well, it's hardly gonna wait. First it's written, then it's boarded, and it's thumbnailed, and it's sorted. A kaleidoscope of images and sound. With a flash they come to life, spit and polish, always nice. Don't forget you've got two weeks to get this right. If there's a portal to Equestria, then it overlooks the park. Where a dozen different people are still working after dark. And their stories come from Burbank, but they live within our hearts. If you watch it and you love it, then they know they've done their part. With the pacing, paint by numbers, clock is racing. Can you please just let me fix this one last thing? But time and tide, they won't abide. Let's move this show along. 
Cause you know you've gotta make those parties sing If those below could hear the music All those people passing by What they don't know, what they don't feel, what they don't realize They don't know how it could change their lives If there's a portal to the west we are Then it overlooks the park Where a dozen different people are still working after dark And the stories come from Burbank But they live within our hearts If you watch it and you love it Then they know they've done their part And memories of the cul-de-sac still haunt these hallowed halls Where pastel colored ponies smile and dance across the walls With their cintiqs all aglow, well I'm sure they'd love to know That their efforts weren't wasted on some second-rate kids' show So have a bite at Deacon's Corner Hell, I hear they've got good fries To walk the line between Ponyville and Gastown All you have to do is close your eyes There's a portal to Equestria and it overlooks the park Where a dozen different people are still working after dark And the stories come from Burbank, but they live within our hearts If you watch it and you love it, then they know they've done their part So give them kudos, write them fan mail, do whatever floats your boat But remember that they're just like you with all their dreams and hopes And also Chef Sandy from Brony Time. Sorry, Bronyville. Mm. <laughs> Let me do that again. Um, I'm not available for chat, apparently. Really? No, I was kidding. Oh. I got this recorder which pops up every time someone tries to text me and says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but Alpha Brony's not available for chat. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh my. Dear Pivoru <laughs> seems to have died on me, so... Oh, so it's um, not just you that it's incredibly slow today. I'm just trying to look for it on the Facebook page, so if I can find it. Somebody fill up time, fill up time. Yeah, I'm trying to find the... Uh, it's, it's a fake screen crap, so, I mean, clearly it's got to be here somewhere. 